Welcome to Fun History. Coffee, our Kofi, uh, coffee people, coffee, coffee. We'll figure it out eventually at the end of this thing. <clears throat> and we want to shout coffee out to our patrons, especially we want to shout out to Eric. <laughs> Thanks, dude. We really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dude. We know wow. secrets. Yeah, because we know what the bodies are buried. Just saying. And we are going to be talking about cow pants. Now hold it. He got ahead of time, so I I got new steak. Look, you like our new set? This is Whoa. awesome. Uh, New stuff. We, this is the eye candy of what we've done, and in the future, I'm not going to talk about it, but I am now. And the, the whole symbolism behind it is over here. He was in second range of the but here's the deal. We were both in these years. We were both the 82nd and F Company 51st, because for the longest time, he wanted to be just like me, and he shadowed me. But eventually, I broke away and became more superior, so I went to Special Forces, and also in a better range of battalion than the second range of because it's one number higher. Let's talk about cow pants. I got nothing. <laughs> I got fucking nothing. Anyway. Fucking goddamn 375 Johnny come lately motherfuckers. All right. All right. Now, hey, anyway, cow pants, American Revolution. All right. For those of you that know us out there, have been supporting us for a while, and, you know, y'all have, have been sending in the donations and everything, and it's awesome. For the cow pants is kind of low-hanging fruit for us. Because uh, that's where the whole idea for this shit came from. It was at Calpins. Yeah, we were actually standing on Calpins when we decided to do this. Yeah. Well, when our director Colleen over there, she decided that we needed to do this because she was gonna make us do it. Um, <clears throat> Calpins is arguably, and in our opinion, probably. Ranks up there as one of the most pivotal battles of the American Revolution. With, without Cowpens, it was it was a series of like a domino effect. Without Cowpens, you wouldn't have eventually had Cornwallis ending up surrendering at Yorktown. Is a cascading, oh shit, freaking shit sandwich of cascading third, third and second and fourth order of effects that are like, fuck, you know, and all of it ended up after Cowpens, all of it ends up freaking what seven months later? Yeah. He's now, at fucking Yorktown, surrendering. The other really important thing about Calpins is that you have a commander, we're going to talk about him a lot here in a minute, a guy called Daniel Morgan. Oh, now, Daniel yeah. Morgan created a tactic where he decided, instead of trying to have an army, one long line of guys shooting at another long line of guys, he decided to do three long line of guys where you'd have to hit each one consecutively. Now, modern day times, this is known as a defense in depth. Russians got really good at this. Oh, no shit. Two. Fucking Russians like, God damn, got really fucking good at this shit. All right. So, but, or the other thing that Morgan figured out is Morgan figured out, and, and this is one of those things that, it's the ethereal, it's the ethereal part of combat. It's the ethereal freaking part of, wow, how'd that happen? It's called leadership. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's called blind ass leadership. It's called, we got a guy that we want to follow and nobody really knows why, but whatever he says, we're going to do because he's a badass. Yeah, he and Morgan was a true fucking badass. Yeah. Why? Because that motherfucker had done it. Yeah. And what he had figured out was how to use a modern military term, assign a troop to task list that made sense. I've got militia, they're good for this. <clears throat> I've got Continentals, who are regular soldiers in the Revolutionary War, yeah. Continental Line, they're good for this. And I've got my uh, my super professional freaking cavalry guys, yeah. that are good for this. He understood how to assign a troop task list that made sense, that freaking, <laughs> the hero of Saratoga, that fucking asshole. Arnold. No. Oh. Well, assholes, aren't 
the asshole was awesome. Oh, you talking about the guy that took all the credit? Yeah, yeah, the fucking oh, that douche oh, fat. fucking uh, Horatio Gates. Fucking Horatio Gates, that fucking douche canoe. Yeah, he took all the credit. He couldn't that. figure out mm-hmm. troops to task. I think that re- Arnold really wasn't a douchebag in Saratoga. He was kind of a hero. He was, he was kind of a, he hero. Was a douchebag later. We're gonna. That's gonna yeah, be a that whole show. other episode. But getting back on the track with with uh, Calpins. Calpins, because of his tactic of having three lines and not one line, every in depth. every single battle fought after that in the South. Had the same exact tactic. We would call that. Worked. We would call that nowadays in the modern military is TTPs or tactics, <laughs> techniques, and procedures. He created this shit, and Green tried to freaking do it on a massive scale later, and it sort of worked, but it sort of didn't. But it sort of did. All right, uh, let's, terrain. Let's, terrain has a lot to do with how you do this. All right, let's get into the fight. First off, setting this up. You gotta realize something happened. It was a massive defeat. The worst defeat in American history until World War II, which is the Bataan, was what happened was an entire Southern army is captured all of them. in Charleston. Fuck. Now, they captured all the all the Continentals in the South Carolina, Virginia Continentals, South Carolina Continentals, North Carolina Continentals, all wiped out. All the artillery, there's like 385 pieces of artillery. And so the British captured us, and now the British have a foothold in the South to launch and now take the whole South back. Capturing Charleston was the second to fucking New York. Yeah, That's second, people, second busiest the port. Second busiest port to New York. Wait, what? Wait, wait. You, well, the British already had New York by this time, right? They captured Charleston. That's yeah. the second freaking most busiest port. Yeah. Holy shit. And wait, South Carolina in the 18th century had more millionaires per capita, more that means more cash flow to your freaking war effort there, more millionaires per capita than any other colony in this brand new freaking United States. So Charleston is lost, and what happens next is the guy who got Charleston, his name was General Clinton, he's a British general, kind so of he took general. Charleston, and he said, all right, I'm going to turn over everything to you, my two IC, the guy, second guy in charge, a guy named Cornwallis. Who was a badass. Yeah, he was. He's a badass. Now, Cornwallis is a, is, a, is a confirmed, in our world, Cornwallis is a confirmed badass. He's pretty good at what he does. Yeah, he's really good. Now, Clinton goes back up to New York because the main army of the Americans is under Washington, and they have laid siege to New York, so Clinton has got to figure out how do I bust out of that. But he tells Cornwallis... You need to take over South Carolina and hold it. subdue it. In other words, build rapport. Get all those people to come in and surrender for you. And don't ever go to North Carolina because if you do, you'll be too far away from your base and you might get surrounded and you might get captured. Don't extend it. Don't extend your supply lines yes. because we can't go that far. Oh, what what wait, what does he do? Let me let me see if some of my friends out there might understand what we're talking about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move. <clears throat> Consecutively, we're gonna move slowly into the back country of South Carolina. We got this big city in Charleston. It's like a super fob. Fob. Super fob. Forward operating base. Super fob. And we're gonna start moving Come out. So what does Cornwallis do? Cornwallis starts fob. establishing fobs. <laughs> he establishes another super fob in Camden. Camden. He establishes another super fob in 96. Okay, let me, let me explain 96. 96 is actually the name of a town. It is. I met my wife in 96. 96 South Carolina. <laughs> so it's actually the name of a town. I should have had a pillow here. So uh, according <laughs> according to freaking history or according to rumor, nobody really knows. But what? Well, no, no, it's 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 so 96, 96 miles is 96 from miles Ishota. from Ishota town, which is a <coughs> Cherokee town. Yeah, it's a trading place. It's a trading. It's a trading town for the Cherokee nations. Is is Ashota, and it was 96 miles from there to that point. Right. And that was where they built a courthouse, and that is basically where. Uh, the English started exerting their control. Was it ninety? Well, it's it's what from there they were able to. You know, got to figure different parts of South Carolina. You had uh, Georgetown, which was on the coast, Charleston on the coast. You had Camden, about halfway into the coast. Uh, Camden, right, right, Camden is really close to where Columbia is now. Basically, Camden was known as Big Pine Tree. Yeah. That's not soon. And then well. you move in even further to the west, and you got ninety six. So these are all these bases that you can move out. And subdue the countryside. They started moving out and establishing all these little fobs and cops. And when I'm talking cops, a, a little freaking combat outpost would be like at Fort oh, Watson. Cop. Okay. A little a cop, a cop would be a combat outpost. That would be like Fort Watson, Granby's Landing, 
places like that. Yeah. Little cops. <clears throat> so the British could control what? The flow of traffic. Now, they could control their little footprint around their fob or their cop, right, in South Carolina. And they spent the next, I don't know, seven, eight months doing Well, no, this. they've got to get the fixed part because we're leading up to what happened to Calvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, the next been, part that's... was all of a sudden because the guy who lost Charleston, he's out, they bring in a new commander. The new commander is a guy called Horatio Gates. The he's a fucking douche canoe. Now he's everybody thinks he's great. He's a fucking asshole. Saratoga was a major victory. He asshole. really didn't have a he didn't shit. It. Arnold did all of it. Yeah, Arnold and Morgan. But, Arnold and Morgan but he took won. the credit. So because he took the credit, all of a sudden. Sure, check out all of it. But anyway, and he took all the credit and everybody thinks he's great. So he shows up and he decides he is gonna go directly toward Camden and try to cut off that supply base. Camden would be like Going to freaking attack Camden would be like the Taliban going to attack Kandahar. Well, when he went to Camden, I'm not going to get into Camden. I'm in mean, a whole, whole order of battle. No, no, that's, that's a whole, whole other, other fucking show. But in a nutshell, what happened was, as he's going to Camden, Cornwallis is coming up from Charleston. It wasn't planned. It was like a meeting engagement. And, and then what happened was up. the two meet each other, end up the Battle of Camden. At the Battle of Camden, Gates gets... Uh, basically, his ass handed to him. The and most of the American family ran away. Badly. They didn't really get captured. But that they motherfucker ran hauled ass. Oh yeah, he was first one. For out. three days, that motherfucker burned a horse to the ground. Yeah, he, he rode 150 miles in less than three days on a horse. And almost made it to Virginia from Camden, South Carolina. No, that motherfucker. He was a douchebag. Fucking Gates was a douchebag. Anyway, he gets fired. Well, he, he gets fired because again, he lost. He gets fired. Congress is like, no. Nope. All right. Before we continue, I'm out of, I'm out of booze, dude. Bartender, we need more bar. Please, please, dear lady. Always gets first because. Because of my daughter. That's my dad. He'll kick he me out if that. I don't give him booze. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Right. Thank you, dear Addie. I do appreciate it, my oh. Oh. lovely niece. So getting on with it. All right, getting on with it. Uh, now, right. what happened after Camden was uh, Gates is gone, so Gates is now pretty much fired. Now they bring in a guy. Now it's not just a fucking asshole. Guy. They don't just bring in a guy. What it is is pretty much Congress chose the first guy to defend the South, uh, Lincoln, and Lincoln lost Charleston. Congress yeah, chose yeah, the, chicken and the ch Congress chose the second guy to defend the South, and it was Gates. Got the chicken guy. So now you've lost a huge amount of your army. So now, finally, finally, they turned to Washington and said, Dude, we are fucked up because we're Congress. Why don't you pick somebody? Because we don't we know don't, fucking we don't anything. Know. We don't know our ass from holy ground. Now, what, what, and tell us. now, what Washington knows is the people under his command. Washington's a really good judge of character. And so he decides, I'm going to pick... Stra tactics, eh, strategy, what? really good. No, no. Judge of character, on it. And even leadership, excellent. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. So, what Washington decides is I'm going to pick the guy in my army who's actually my quartermaster. Now, the reason... The guy knows logistics, and logistics makes a fucking war start. If you can figure out how to defeat an army by by all the stuff they use, the you can defeat the, the army. Uh, well, even you know, Napoleon, an army travels on stomach, you figure out how to defeat that stomach, and you can defeat the army. Pretty much. So, what Washington does, Washington chooses Nathaniel Green. Now, Nathaniel Green... is a fascinating character. He is, and that'll be a whole other show. By himself. But Green, as he travels south, he decides... I'm. First off, Green told Washington, can I take anybody I want? And it's like, yeah, you can take anybody you want. So he travels through Virginia, and he decides to pick a guy who pretty much told the entire army, FUCK YOU! Alright, <laughs> Now, the reason he said that was because Morgan, Daniel Morgan, was this guy who did this amazing feats of fucking human endurance up in Quebec. He's the guy that pretty much ran from rooftop to rooftop doing a running gunfight and ended up all, you know, almost taking Quebec, but then he got his ass handed to him. He got captured for a little while. Yeah. But then he also was at Saratoga and he came up, he basically pretty much pushed Gates and said, we're going to do this. And Gates didn't want to between Morgan and Arnold. Arnold they Arnold, did what they fucking Arnold. wanted to. So Morgan quits because he's like, I'm old, I don't need this shit, 
And if you're not going to appreciate me for who I am, fuck you! Because this dude's broken, dude. This dude is... Oh, he's really fucked up. Wow. He's back like me, his fucking jack. If they had Percocets back then, he'd be popping up. Oh, I'm telling you. He'd be, <laughs> he was like boozing he steadily. Why? His back is fucking really hammered. He's got fucking rheumatism. He's got freaking arthritis. If it's out there, he's got it. Dude's only freaking... What, about 45, 50 years yeah, old? about 45, but that's... 45, 50 years century, old. century, that's like 100. Fucked up. He has been... This guy's been in the fucking mix for quite a while. I mean, dude started out in the French Indian War driving a fucking wagon. He was a trucker. He was a fucking truck driver. He was a trucker for the British. For the, for the British. Man. And the Brits were like, freaking... They didn't right. like him either. Not even then. We'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Now, on the way through... Green asks Morgan, hey, I want you to be in, uh, what a general in my army. And Morgan's like, uh, he doesn't want to say Green, what? fuck you, because he likes Green, but he's kind of like, no, seriously, fuck you. I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm kind of, I'm just, fuck you. My fucking, uh, but he, dude, my but Green told him, hey, I will let you pick anybody you want in any way you want. Wait, what? You will fucking do what you want. And so Morgan's like, stand by. Hang on. Okay. Uh, if I could actually do what I want, maybe uh, we might win something for a change. Now, flash forward. Fast forward. They end up uh, moving down North Carolina, and what's left after Camden, there's only like six companies of Continentals. Now, Delawares, yeah, Marylanders, Delawares, Marylanders, and a handful of North Carolinians and Virginians. And Virginians. Yeah. yeah. But there's not many. There's only six companies. A company in the 18th century is 50 guys. So basically, there's not that many. They've had the shit kicked out of them yeah. now for a year. And they're really demoralized. Seriously. A year. But they're still in the fight because they're not going to give up. Now, what Green decides to come up with, first off, something happened before this, too. we got to talk about that a little bit. And what happened was something that had nothing to do with Green and nothing to do with Morgan. It had everything to do with that wild card. And the wild card was Cornwallis told one of his guys, hey, I want you to go out west and subdue all these mountaineer motherfuckers. Ferguson! Yeah, Ferguson. Now, Ferguson, you go out there and subdue the mountaineer, and instead, Ferguson, what he could have done was go out there and go, hey, you guys, I kind of like what you're doing, and I really appreciate it, but if you couldn't fight me, that would be awesome. But you know what he really said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm coming over the mountains, and I'm going to fucking rape all you Fuck you! And piss on your fucking grave! And he also said, even if Jesus Christ himself led you, I could still defeat him. Now, you got to realize something about the South at that time. In the western part oh, of the South. Oh, my God. There was some, they actually called this the Presbyterian Rebellion. Because yep. when Ferguson said that, it became a jihad. It was a holy war. No shit. And if I mean, you kill like, that motherfucker... You just pissed off the entire oh, fucking yeah. world. Everybody showed up. Everybody. From five states. If it, five state redneck army of armed motherfuckers from five states. Everybody Jacob, that had a horse Tennessee, and a rifle showed the North fuck Carolina, up. South Carolina, and guess Georgia. What? There was nobody in charge. Well, and that's it. There was a bunch of rednecks that are armed and went, Lou, we're going to go kill them. All right? So... Now, they all oh, show up at a place called King's Mountain. King's Mountain! Mountain. Anyway, but sure. anyway, what happens is one third of Cornwallis' army is surrounded at King's Mountain by rednecks, heavily armed rednecks, and they get heavily defeated. Actually, every single one of them either gets killed or captured. Every single one of the British. And they really weren't British, they're actually Americans. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called provincials. We'll talk about that in a minute. Provincials are a whole. Yeah. yeah. Now, check it out. They all got defeated. So now, one third of Cornwallis' army is. <laughs> prisoner moving into North Carolina. It's like, fuck, I lost a third of my army to that shit? Now, Green and Morgan show up and they realize this and like, we got to figure out how do we get Cornwallis to come into North Carolina so we can surround him and kill him like we did Burgoyne at Saratoga. It worked once, let's do it again. And we could do all this now, shit over again. Now, didn't quite work. Pretty close though. Now, what, what Green came up, his tactic was, okay, I'm going to break my army into two. I one, of the, well, one of the reasons he broke his army into two, and this is a low freaking low hanging fruit, was where I got my army right now, we're out of food. Yeah. If you go, if you go fast forward into fucking Napoleon, Napoleon actually makes a freaking he actually makes a statement of the army lives off the land. You got to spread your army out, all right? Well, and then Green spreads his army. He separates his army in the face oh, of the gonna, enemy. Yeah. He, he separates his army in the face of the enemy. A, to try to feed them, but B, the biggest reason was... Well, the strategy, the great strategy is, if I break my army in two, if I go toward Camden, 
If Cornwallis Threaten follows it. me to Threaten it. Camden, then that leaves 96 wide open and we could take it. Pretty much. Then he also separated the second part of the army was under Morgan. If Morgan goes to 96 and Cornwallis goes after him, it leaves Charleston wide fucking open and therefore Green could take Charleston. Either way, it's a win-win situation. But what they didn't realize, or this is something that most Americans don't think. Most Americans think all oh, the British were these guys that fought in lines and red suits and oh, they're easy. No, the British Army was probably the most adaptable army ever. These they're guys, good. they would change your tactics, change your uniform, change your weapons at a fucking heartbeat. Professional unlike, as fuck. Oh yeah, unlike the stereotype that we think, it's not the stereotype. No. Cornwallis is probably one of the best commanders ever. I, no, I tell you what, Cornwallis... Oh, the motherfucker conquered India, dude! Oh, yeah, later on he conquered, conquered India. Conquered the entire oh, subcontinent of India. He made the British Empire of the 19th that. century. He made the British Empire of the Statues, he's buried in Westminster Abbey. Just go oh, ahead. Oh, no, and... he's got this giant fucking thing with rubies and shit in I'm India. The, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Anyway, Cornwallis is smart. So when Green breaks his army in two, what does Cornwallis do? I'm going to break my army in two. Yeah, he does. I'm going to go after the main army under Green. I'm going to stay right here in fucking Camden. But I'm going to send this hot fucking dude, a cavalry dude who's pretty squared away, is we're going to send this guy after him, a guy called Bannister Tarleton. Oh my god, Tarleton! Tarleton. Fuck! Next time on F-Bomb History. The bat. You're not gay if you like Brad Pitt. Okay, so check. <laughs> Did you just say that out loud? Oh, uh, anyway. Last night, all full of lush, my babe began to fuss, and I said, honey, honey, I don't care what the people are thinking, I'm not drunk, I'm just drinking, I said, I'm up, another round, I said, I'm up, another round, I said, I'm up.